Hello and welcome to this exciting video about dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. Of course, we're not going to be able to talk about all aspects of dynamic blocks in this relatively short video. If we did, we'd be sitting here till doomsday because there's actually quite a lot which one can do and it can get really fairly complicated. In actual fact, I personally only use dynamic blocks for relatively simple things, things which you can do very quickly and are practical to use in everyday drafting. So that's what I'd like to demonstrate in fact today. Let's start then by making a block. I have here prepared a number of elements which look like a window element. I even have an attribute ready to, to be used, dimensioning and so on. So all we need to do is actually make our block. So here we are, create block. I'm going to call it window element 01. Insert bottom left will be good. Select objects. There we go. Convert to block is fine. Open in block editor is actually what we want to do. Everything else I can leave as it is. And I say simply OK. OK, he wants an element number. We'll call it window element 01. Want a bit of space between there as well. Say OK. And here we are in the block editor environment. OK, this is our control panel for dynamic blocks. And as you may notice, we need parameters. And we need to marry these parameters with the actions which we want. And what I want to do is to be able to increase the size of this element by basically stretching this part of the window. So this is going to stay the same. I just want to be able to make this side bigger. So for that, of course, I need a linear parameter. So I'll say my linear, linear parameter is from there to there. And that's called distance 1. So that's my parameter. Now I need to marry an action with it. And I want to basically stretch this part of the window. So I take stretch. First, I'm asked select parameter. So I'll take that one specify parameter point to associate with action. So that would be here. Uh, specify first corner of stretch frame. That's this one. And then select objects. So normally in a stretch in a stretch action you select the objects and this the stretch frame in the same action. With this one it's a little bit more complicated um, but it's not difficult. So select objects, we're now finished. I can simply go out with enter. Now, we only I only want to stretch this in one direction. And so basically, I just want to use one of these two points. And to change that from how it is now to just on one side, I can just mark this and go to properties. And here, number of, let's stretch that so we can see what it is. Number of grips is what it actually is. Uh, we just want one. And there we have it on the right hand side. Everything else I think we can leave as it is. Wonderful. So I can put that out and close my block editor. Save changes. So we have everything we should have. And then I mark this. And the, instead of just having the grip here to the left to, to move the block, I now have an arrow here on the right. And I can change the size of my block at will. Now in the background I have on another layer I kind of have the surrounding wall opening also drawn already. Now what I'm going to do is copy this a couple of times and see what happens. Okay I'll change this the, and then we know which one we're talking about. So that's number two and we'll make this one number three. OK, now what happens if I change the size of my window opening? I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than it is. Um, that would be good. And this one I'll make a lot bigger. If I do it with stretch, then it takes the uh, the dimensions for the 
for the opening with it. I'm going to make this ridiculously large. Good. Actually, that's a little bit too, still too large for my wicked purposes. Good. So this is the opening here. Nine meters. This is the opening here. A little under a meter. Okay, I can actually then stretch my my element here. Let's do it. So there's still a little bit of air there. No, that was too much. So I can should be able to stretch it onto the point. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. And I can do the same here, just stretch it from this corner across to the node here. Okay, some of the brighter among you may have noticed that um, this doesn't really work here. We have a complete mix-up of, of profiles and so on. I'll just hide the dimension layers and we should be able to see how awfully confused this all is. I need another one somewhere. There we go. Element dimension is also visible. Even those those of us who are not so expert with window profiles can see that that's not going to work. Now this one, I'll make everything visible again, is an element which is over nine meters wide and that's not impossible technically speaking but there are limits as to how big the glass can be and if elements are under six meters in width then they can be done without having to up at profiles so it would actually be quite nice if I could ha have limits on my element change here so I'm going to introduce those R mark and right click it to go into my block editor I'm going to look at the properties of my parameter here and see if there's anything I can change there. Here we have under value set distance type. Now I'm going to say I only produce elements with in increments of a, of a millimeter or in increments of 10 millimeters. I'm going to say well my minimum is going to be this plus a little bit here because otherwise I would take a completely different element. So if I'm going to have two openings in my element, I wouldn't want this one to be too small. So I'm just going to say my minimum, so measured from this corner, would be, I don't know, 1250. We can already see where our minimum appears. Uh, and my maximum, I'll say, is going to be just under my longest profile length. And already we have here so a, a hint of how that's going to look. If I zoom in a bit we can see those are my 10 millimeters going from my minimum to my maximum length. Okay now that's looking good. Close block editor, save changes yes please and we see although we I'd stretched this really large he's now gone to the maximum and this one has gone from the minimum to or, or from how small it was to the minimum. So in actual fact if my hole is only this big, I'm either going to have to take a, a different element type or I'll just have to stretch my stretch my opening. Now if it's only drawn that's not a problem. If it's already, already constructed then somebody's going to have to go to work with some kind of a concrete cutter or something similar. So let's get a few more of these on the go. I'm actually looking for an object snap here. He's not finding my node. Not quite sure why. Never mind. Let's just take something on the dimension here. And then we can do it perpendicular to this one. So that looks good. Let's just pop this over here. And this one, of course, I'm going to have to brick up a bit of this or take another element. Well, we can stretch this over here, though. So that would be a, so an appropriate hole in the wall for this particular element. OK. Um, to be pedantic, I have a, a mark here which should show this is a, a piece of glazing which isn't to be opened. Um, here it's in the middle. 
how it was originally. Here it's kind of hanging around somewhere in the middle of my wall, and here it's way off centre. How can we solve that particular problem? Well, that's not difficult. Let's open up our block again. So here is our, our, market, our marking. This is in the middle of this particular element. I can just check that by just drawing a line here. Yep, that looks pretty much central to me. So what I'm going to do is associate this object with an action. Now I don't need to stretch it, I can just move it. So first I have to select the parameter. Well I'm going to take the same parameter of course. Specify parameter point, that would be this one here on the right. Select objects, that'll be these ones here. Okay, now I know it's not going to work, but nonetheless I'm going to have a look and see how it looks now. So there it is in the middle. Uh, here it's ended up in the middle of the other one, and here it's ended up way to the right. So I haven't really got any further, it's just differently wrong. But that is not a problem. Go over again to our block editor. I'm going to open up my properties dialog, which is here, and mark this particular action. And here, by overrides, I have a distance multiplier. And all I need to do is put in a factor of a half and it means that this will move to the right half of the distance that this corner moves to the right which means it'll always be in the middle. Of course if I had it divided into three I would need to put a, a 0 0.333333 here otherwise you know other multiplication factors but this should actually now work. There we go it's in the middle all over the place which is actually exactly how I wanted it. So what else can we do? I've actually already prepared this drawing with a little circle up here to the left that is supposed to represent a sort of alarm loop. These little sort of electric coils which go in the middle of a or in the corner of a piece of glass where it basically detects if the glass is going to break. And sometimes the architects like to know is it going to be to the left or is it going to be to the right? Is it going to be top or the bottom or whatever? And you can you know, draw it and then you he sees it and says, yep, that's how I want it. But maybe sometimes you have elements with it and sometimes you have elements without it. And for this, I want to use a visibility feature. So basically, I should be able to turn it off and on. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's go into our block again. So mark, right-click, block editor. And then here with parameters, we have a visibility parameter says well where should it go let's put it in here and then we can go up here to visibility states I'm going to rename that I'm going to call that alarm coil yes and I'm going to mark that make a new one and call it alarm coil no Okay, so I have two visibility states, yes and no. And when I'm on no, I can then say make invisible. So that one and that one. Enter. Just test it. Yes. No. So there I have a visibility parameter. Close block editor. Save. And now when I mark my block, I not only have my possibility of changing the size here to the right, I also have a visibility parameter which I can now change, so with, without. Of course there are other things we can do. For example, it may be interesting for you to be able to mirror the block, or it may be interesting instead of having sizes which are determined by intervals with a maximum minimum maybe you just have a small list or even a large list of sizes which you want to put in a list in, as opposed to stretching the thing it could be you want to have an, a block with an array there are all kinds of possibilities even in the in the range of what I will call simple dynamic blocks but those will be discussed in another video so I hope you found this one very interesting I hope you can use the points at which we've discussed. Feel free to contact me. My contact details will now be visible. My website, www.cad-course.com. There you can find interesting information as well.
I look forward to hearing from you. Till then, bye. Thank you.